you, Karen. And thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about cryptococcal meningitis at uh, this conference. So my name is Angela. I'm an infectious diseases physician working in clinical and implementation research and advocacy. I'm going to be talking about cryptococcal meningitis, a fungal opportunistic infection of the central nervous system, talking very briefly about the latest burden data, moving on to talk about treatment guidelines, the access issues surrounding the essential antifungal treatments for uh, cryptococcal meningitis, I'll then outline some of the advocacy work that we're doing together as part of the CryptoMag advocacy group, and then lastly finish by mentioning a pro an implementation project called the DREAM project, which is aimed at driving down HIV-associated meningoencephalitis mortality in LMICs. So this data was uh, published in the Lancet Infectious Diseases just over a, a week ago, and there's some key take-home messages. So these are revised figures from uh, the CDC and the University of Minnesota. And the striking um, burden data is that it represents 15% of AIDS-related mortality, with most of these ca cases occurring in Africa. And importantly, there is no evidence of a decline in the absolute number of cases in LMICs, and this is despite ART rollout. These figures are further substantiated by the latest data from trials across um, Africa and also Southeast Asia, which are telling us that cryptococcal meningitis is now present in ART-experienced patients. So approximately 50% of patients with cryptococcal meningitis presenting to uh, tertiary and secondary level facilities have are ART-experienced. The gold standard treatment of two weeks of amphotericin B and flucytosine is aspirational for most LMIC settings. And the latest WHO and IDSA guidelines are tailored according to the availability of flucytosine and the possibility of safely monitoring amphotericin B. In fact, what occurs in routine practice is that patients are given fluconazole monotherapy with mortality rates of over 70%. Alternative strategies, which are effective and also can be better tolerated and monitored, are short-course amphotericin B, either in combination with fluconazole or flucytosine, or a purely oral combination of fluconazole and flucytosine. And these uh, two strategies have been trialed against the gold standard treatment regimen in the ACTA trial, with um, results hotly anticipated at IAS in July. This is the treatment schedule for a patient with cryptococcal meningitis, so an intensive induction phase aimed at clearing the organism from the CSF. Um, as I said, in routine care in LMICs, this is most often fluconazole, which is an inadequate induction therapy, followed by um, consolidation and maintenance phases with fluconazole. I'll now go on to talk about the access issues, so comparing and contrasting uh, the very varied access issues that we have for the three essential antifungal drugs for cryptococcal meningitis. So starting with amphotericin B, the originator manufacturer, as most of you will know, is BMS. There's only one FDA-approved generic manufacturer in the US, XGen. In terms of access to this drug, it needs intravenous um, administration, so requires hospitalization. Thrombophlebitis is a significant side effect, so um, venflon sites need to be changed um, very frequently. Toxicity is exceptionally common, such that you have to supplement um, the drug with potassium and magnesium. And renal impairment and anemia are extremely common, especially in the second week of therapy. There's lots of intergeographical variation in cost. There was work done um, by members of my group at St. George's and treatment action campaign, which led to the cost of the uh, one vial going down to $3.5 in uh, South Africa. However, it can cost up to $13, as I'm told by colleagues in Zimbabwe. Furthermore, drug supply interruptions are extremely common, and funding, procurement, and distribution are currently uncoordinated. On the other hand, the fluconazole um, is widely available 
um, the originating manufacturer is, again, most of you all know, is Pfizer. And it's widely available through the Diflucan Partnership Program. However, there are very frequent stockout issues. And for those of you who work in an LMIC setting, it relies on filling a lot of paperwork, which often um, is, is difficult to keep up with. So there are frequent stockouts. And my colleagues at MSF are really not very keen on uh, these types of programs in terms of sustainable um, availability of drugs. And what they say is that actually it's stopping generic manufacturers of fluconazole coming to um, the LMIC markets. Lastly, we have flucytosine, which is um, an excellent example of complete market failure. There are three SRA uh, manufacturers currently. However, it's completely unavailable in uh, LMIC settings in Africa and Southeast Asia, where disease burden is highest. And this is despite data from in vitro animal model data, phase two and phase three trials, which says that it really is a key molecule, either in combination with amphotericin B or with fluconazole for the treatment of cryptococcal meningitis. <coughs> I just want to just very briefly mention diagnostic tests. So we have cryptococcal antigen lateral flow assays um, available in the last five years, which have really revolutionized the diagnosis of cryptococcal meningitis. They have 99% sensitivity and specificity. And we're in an exciting era of second generation tests produced by both IMI and also Biosynex based in Strasbourg. Uh, this test was developed in collaboration with Institut Pasteur. And the beauty of these tests are they can tell you the cryptococcal antigen titer at the point of diagnosis. And this is important clinical applications because we know that the crag titer, the higher it is, the poorer with the prognosis. And as I'll mention very briefly, cryptococcal antigen screening programs where you're screening large numbers of severely immunosuppressed patients with CRAG LFAs, you can know what the titer is. And we know now that the uh, high titer correlates with the presence of subclinical meningitis. And the issue um, with the diagnostic test is that actually, again, in routine care, they're not available. Um, they're not uh, procured currently by the Global Fund, and, in, and instead people rely on India Inc., which is um, significantly less sensitive. So these access issues, both to drugs and to tests, were summarized in this uh, Lancet um, uh, Infectious Diseases Personal View. And following the publication of this work, we formed the Cryptococcal Meningitis Action Group, which is a coalition to address gaps in the prevention, prompt diagnosis, and management of cryptococcal meningitis. And there are stakeholders from WHO, CDC, MSF, their access campaign, and CHAI. Some of our achievements include um, listing of flucytosine and amphotericin on the WHO essential medicines list. Previously, it was on the complementary list. We've also um, argued for cryptococcal meningitis to be reported on within the G-Finder report, and this has been the case since 2013. And it was fairly easy to argue, despite it, cryptococcal meningitis, as you will all know, not being an NTD, um, that actually it meets all the criteria of the policy cures think tank. So it predominantly affects patients in LMICs, there is market failure for the current antifungal drugs, and there's an urgent need for new, effective, and well-tolerated treatment regimens. And the striking um, findings of this report are since the inclusion of cryptococcal meningitis since 2013, is that cryptococcal meningitis consistently ranks in the bottom tier amongst the most poorly funded neglected diseases since its inclusion in the report in 2013. So what does, it look, what does this look like in terms of figures? So these are figures for 2015. Um, $5.8 million of funding for cryptococcal meningitis, mostly from public funders, in comparison with $567 million for tuberculosis, when we know that cryptococcal meningitis contributes to 15% of HIV-related mortality and is just below tuberculosis in terms of uh, a leading cause of HIV-related mortality. And I think there's a common misconception that cryptococcal meningitis funding fits into the HIV AIDS pot, which is sadly just not the case. 
So the aims of our group currently are to improve urgently the access to flucytosine and liposomal amphotericin B, and I'll focus on flucytosine in particular in the interest of time in this talk. Also, we're looking to implement cryptococcal antigen screening programs. And so the idea with that, if you remember the slide that I showed you about the cryptococcal antigen natural flow, flow assay, the presence of cryptococcal antigenemia precedes the development of meningitis by weeks to months. So this is a golden opportunity to give a patient preemptive antifungal therapy and to prevent the development of meningitis. And some of you will have heard of the REMSTART trial, which was published in 2015, which showed a mortality benefit. So this was a multi-center study occurring in Zambia and Tanzania, which showed that when you combine cryptococcal antigen screening and enhanced ART adherence, that you have a mortality benefit. This um, strategy of cryptococcal antigen screening is um, endorsed by the WHO, however, it's a low-level uh, recommendation, so it's interesting, um, I haven't got time to go into this, how that fits or not currently with WHO test and treat. It's endorsed by the CDC, MSF and CHI, and it's been adopted into national policy in approximately 24 countries, including uh, South Africa, Rwanda, but out of those 24, um, very few have actually been able to implement it. In terms of R&D, there have been no new antifungal drugs for cryptococcal meningitis in over 25 years. And there are just two compounds, the VT1598 and T2307, which are in preclinical um, phases, sorry, phase one, phase, uh, uh, phase one um, human dose finding trials. All of the rest, um, so the oral formulations of amphotericin B are in preclinical phases of development. So flucytosine, it's um, an off-patent molecule, which is um, over 50 years old. There's an expression of interest from the WHO for slow re for release formulations of 5-FC, because currently it's the dose that's given for cryptococcal meningitis is 100 milligrams per kilo per day in four divided doses. We've been working in tandem with the MSF Access campaign on this issue to improve access of this key molecule, either in combination with fluconazole or amphotericin B. We're lobbying generic manufacturers of 5-FC and also international funders. So talking about cryptococcal antigen screening programs where flucytosine actually might be an important molecule, but also in terms of optimized antifungal regimens for confirmed cases of cryptococcal meningitis. Also working with academic collaborators at the University of Liverpool, University of Durham. Um, the pharmacy world has read some of the advocacy papers, and there are now new methods, uh, cheaper and less wasteful for manufacturing 5FC. I'll just finish by mentioning um, the talk that, um, that the, sorry, the paper um, that was mentioned as an introduction. So my colleague, Sheila Molloy, who's in the audience, and I have been working on a paper alongside all of the stakeholders as part of our group on a, a paper putting forward arguments for cryptococcal meningitis to be listed as an NTD. So in terms of uh, the third point, the strategies that we're putting forward in terms of control would be the cryptococcal antigen screening programs and also optimized antifungal regimens for confirmed cases. I am aware that there have been high-level meetings at the WHO, I think, at the beginning of last year, which were that categorically cryptococcal meningitis could not be listed as an NTD because it was HIV related And when I was reading, uh, writing the paper and getting various um, feedback, um, I felt in some ways that this was uh, perhaps a circular argument and that whether it's in the HIV-related camp or the NTD camp, it still needs the funding, the policy drives, and the drug pipelines, and, and in this case, very urgently. So in terms of cryptococcal meningitis, um, I hope the take-home messages that you will take away are that it contributes to 15% of HIV-related mortality. It's not going away, and I think that that is a message which has um, uh, somehow there's a sort of myth that it will go away because that's what happened in the West with ART rollout. There's no evidence of that at the moment, and that is because of ART failure and ART non-adherence. The current treatments, the three essential antifungal drugs, they're 
off patent drugs, um, they're either too toxic or not available. So they're wo woefully inadequate for this significant burden of disease, which is second to tuberculosis. And hopefully I've convinced, convinced you that whichever camp cryptococcal meningitis finds itself in the future, that we desperately do need um, extra funding, drug pipelines, and, um, at, and pushes in terms of policy to drive down mortality. I'll just finish by mentioning a very practical project, the um, DREAM project, which is an implementation project um, based in three countries in East, Central, and Southern Africa. And we're working, it's very much a local African principal investigator-led, working with their hospital counterparts and ministries of health to get the latest RDTs, including the CRAG uh, lateral flow assays and the optimized antifungal uh, treatment regimens, as have been trialed within ACTA, into routine care. And this is a huge challenge to work within routine care and to try and demonstrate a mortality approach of an algorithm um, with, the R with these RDTs and optimized uh, treatment regimens. Here are the aims of the study. If we do show that there's a, a significant mortality benefit using this approach, we hope that these um, findings, including the RDTs and drug regimens, can be um, implemented much more widely in LMIC settings. So it remains for me to thank all of my CryptoMag um, colleagues who are too numerous to mention individually, but all these um, great collaborators, and also all those that I collaborate with for the DREAM project. Thank you. <laughs>